Yo, I have something for 2018 that you do not want to miss. So check out the entire video because you don't want to miss a second what's coming up. Let's get to the show. Hello, welcome to The Blessing Report with Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy. And I have a very exciting video for today. And I just want to say this, yo, please watch the full video because it is mad dope that um, the Lord can give like a prophetic word for the entire year of 2018. I don't want y'all to miss um, some cool parts. Um, so yeah, um, let's get to the show and basically the big word, if you just want a word for 2018, um, in summary, is alignment. <laughs> and um, if if you like taking notes, I don't know, y'all take notes to my videos. <laughs> um, I guess you can call this video alignment with a subtitle of divine strategy and divine instruction. Um, from the Lord. So this is getting in um, proper position and alignment um, corporately as a body of Christ, but also um, individually with our own um, calling offices and operations. So the major um, scripture text that I am going off of is Joshua 6, because I think oftentimes that we are not sensitive to how specific God is with his instructions and um, how much promises, blessings, calling, operation, giftings is in that divine instruction and divine strategy when things are locked up in the heavenlies, principalities, spiritual realms, uh, rulers in dark places, high dark places, all right? So um, I wanna read this because reading this on the thing, that wasn't working. So Joshua 6, and um, Joshua is leading um, Israel after uh, Moses. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. So um, symbolically, um, or not even symbolically, historically Jericho is um, kind of like a war city um, or like, I guess like fortress, but a stronghold is like a good word to um, summarize it, like um, to summarize it. So think about stronghold in the natural word, but also um, stronghold in the spiritual word um, as well. Um, verse two, and the Lord said unto Joshua, see, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor, and ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around the city once thou shalt do six days. And seven priests shall bear the uh, bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. In the seventh day, ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets, and it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, and when they ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, pass on, encompass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the Ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord blew the trumpets and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men, armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpet and the rear word came after the priests going on and blowing the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people saying, 
ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout, then shall ye. Now, then shall ye shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city going about once and they came into the camp and lodged. And Joshua rose early in the morning and the priest took up the ark of the Lord and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of the ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually, blew with the trumpets, and armed men, and the armed men went before them, but the rear word came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing the trumpets, and the second day they compassed the city once and returned it to the camp, so they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day, they that rose early about the dawn of the day in Compass City after the same manner seven times, only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, shout for the Lord hath given you the city, giving you the city, all right? <laughs> and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed when ye take up the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city every man straight before him and they took the city and they destroyed all that was in the city both man and woman young and old and ox and sheep and donkey with the edge of the sword sword spiritual sword word of god but Joshua had said unto two men that had spied out the city, go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath as she swear unto, as ye have sworn unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and iron and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the lord oh let's just finish this and joshua saved rahab the harley alive in her father's household and all that she had and she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho and Joshua adjured them at that time saying cursed be the man before the Lord that rise up and builds this city Jericho he shall lay the foundation thereof of his firstborn and his youngest son shall set up the gates of it so the Lord was with Joshua and his fame was noised throughout all the country. All right, we're gonna pick this apart. So um, divine strategy, divine instruction when it comes to alignment with the Lord for 2018. Um, what we see is um, divine instruction when it comes to the Lord being very specific, specific with um, Joshua and the children of Israel. Um, said to um, walk around the city one time um, every day for six days um, to begin with. So we have the Ark of the Covenant. If you don't know, that is where they house the presence of God. Um, and if we see in positioning men of war in the beginning, Ark of the Covenant, and then um, 
men of war at the end. So God was it literally in the midst of them, in the middle. So um, make sure everything that you do is for the glory of God. Everything that you do is in faith and God is in the midst of you. You're operating and your position like literally um, geographically where you are um, in job, school, or um, church. So God's in the midst. Um, six days walk about. So this is us. We need to um, be steadfast and consistent in certain things that God wants us to do. We don't serve a God of um, confusion, but of instruction and discipline. So we need to be um, disciplined on where we are being faithful. It says, uh, God is a rewarder of those who faithfully seek him. So we need um, just um, spiritual maturity and being consistent in the things that we start, that we finish. <laughs> and um, things that we put our words on. Um, God is a God of covenant and relationship and promise and decrees. Uh, but anything that we um, declare over our lives, we need to start and finish and stop dropping them. Um, so be consistent at your job, school, workplace, uh, but especially in your assignment, whatever the Lord is actually telling you to do, um, making books, music, movies, something. Before anything ever bared fruit, before anything ever um, had the walls to actually come down, God just needed the Israelites to be consistent in walking. And a lot of us need to be consistent in our prayer life, our Bible study life, our um, fasting, that God can um, move us to the next point. So the next point is that shift, right? So it said on the seventh day, they had to walk around the city seven times. So a lot of us, we need to be sensitive to increase in discipline and requirement. So a lot of us, uh, the Lord's calling us to more prayer, more fasting, um, more um, Bible study, waking up earlier. And we're like, man, Lord, why did I do this? Um, other people don't have to do this. It does not matter. Um, there are things in the heavenly spiritual realm that only come out of you. It come out um, in the spiritual realm <laughs> that only come out with more, uh, more sacrifice, right? Uh, more um, like pressing in, right? So. All of us want to be anointed, right? But if we look historically and culturally, what you use to be um, anointed is like olive oil, kind of, but oil um, through olives. But oil only comes out of olives through the pressing, through the sacrifice. So a lot of us, uh, we want all the benefits of God with none of the, the discipline. But um, there is a more of requirement. So we need to expect more from God and expect to um, to have more required of us for much is given much is required so we have to um, be sensitive um, to that so be sensitive to change and shifts don't get into um, ritualism or a routine or customs but get in like a real relationship and true religion which is a relationship with God and with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus all right um, next part um, the priest there were only seven priests that were allowed to hold the horns um, to be sounded, but priests in the um, lineage of Levi, the Levites, um, they were consecrated and called, right? Um, and so we have um, number seven. Um, seven is the number of completion, but we're actually gonna go back to six because um, six is the number of man, flesh, and often sin also. Um, if we go back to the days, certain things need to die off in your consistency for the divine. So um, not by number, but when Moses was leading the people out of Egypt, it was for 40 days, for, uh, not 40 days, 40 nights, that's no, it was for 40 years. And why was that? Because that lineage had to die off that was rebellious and disobedient to God. So when you have those six days of consistency 
um, with Joshua, there's certain um, spiritual hindrances that need to die off in us internally um, that God can move us um, in that shift. The Lord is divine because I did not have that coming into the video. Um, so the priests, Levites, um, are sanctified. Um, sanctified means to be set apart for God's use um, for that operation. So only priests and Levites were allowed to carry the Ark of the Covenant, which was the um, presence of God. So if we look at us being in alignment, um, divine strategy, divine um, appointment instruction from the Lord, we need to know who is on our team of seven. I think that's why... Um, the Bible says like seven because it's the number of completion. Um, we need to uh, take inventory of everyone that is in close proximity with us. So friendships, relationships, family. Um, I'm not saying like, you know, literally pick seven people. But um, biblically, if we look at um, Jesus' disciples, he had 12 disciples, but three inner disciples. There's only a certain amount of space when it comes to closeness with God and closeness with the Lord. So divine instruction, divine strategy, take inventory of everyone who's occupying space um, of what is their operation? What is their relationship to us? What are they doing for us or against us? Like literally go one by one. Lord, what's Winston doing? Da, 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 boom, knock them out. Because um, the seven priests, Levites, um, they had horns. Um, to do something. So if you have someone out of alignment and out of operation, um, someone cannot position themselves in an occupied space. So the Lord might want you to have a better friendship with Winston than Winston Easter. I don't know. <laughs> but um, if Winston is your best friend, you can't develop a relationship with Winston Nisa or um, relationships. You can't get married if you already have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or whatever. Um, so really um, know that sanctification is setting apart. So if that number is seven, the number of completion, then there's a set strategy use and role that's the word i'm looking for there's a set role for these people in your lives so really um ask about that all right so priest levites um divine instruction right the lord told them as they were walking the six days and the seventh day to not speak and um this is important because it laid the groundwork for sounding the trumpet in the shout so Sitting and resting in the presence of God is very important to hearing from him. A lot of us, we really be living by God grace this. Not that I hear your voice and this is where you're called and destined and purposed me to be. But Lord, just let me do whatever and be in this. But if the Lord is giving you instruction, um, so this is Proverbs 3 verses 5, 6, 7, 8 area. Um, lean not on your own understanding, but acknowledge God in all of your ways and he will make your path straight. We need to take instruction and inventory on all our commitments because that's a really easy way for us to become out of alignment because we're out of position, because we're out of assignment. We're in another assignment, another person's assignment uh, for one that we're not graced in. So God says um, to acknowledge me in all your ways, the way that you acknowledge God in all your ways is not picking a way and then trying to find God in the midst while you're already there. Cause you're always asking God to bless decisions that you made without him. But that's not what 2018 or any of our life is called for. It's called for us being in alignment in instruction and strategy. So to acknowledge God in all your ways, it's like, Lord, I'm about to go to the left. Is the left the right way to go? Nope. Lord, I'm about to go to the right. Is the right way the right way to go? Nope. Lord, I'm about to go to the middle. Is the middle the right way to go? Yes, I am there. Cool. And then you move. So 
Um, I think that's why there's something in silence, in rest, in abiding. Um, John 15, abide in me and I in you. Cool. So um, really abiding. Um, so um, this is the cool part, right? Um, it says on the last day, um, completion, that they sounded the trumpet. There are promises and decrees, um, basically prophecy. If you don't know what prophecy is, prophecy is what is God saying, like literally that simple. Um, so um, there's an importance of words. God spoke everything into existence. Um, our declarations, our proclamations, our words are very, they're always important, but it's important for our alignment. So um, scripturally, um, you write the vision so someone after can take up um, the vision after you. So if we're talking about internally um, and corporately, um, the importance of word in 2018 and alignment, um, your prayer life is very important. It's always important. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not, I know I'm, this is like a prophetic word or whatever, but nothing here should sound different than what the Bible already says and what we already should be doing. Um, but, um, prayer life is important, but also like decrees and declarations because that's where covenant comes from. So I know personally, um, and even like corporately between us, um, a lot of us have to do a lot of repenting for, um, words spoken over us and um, spoken over other people. So that's word curses, speaking ill onto someone because, um, sin, transgressions, iniquity, um, limit not you can't limit God but it makes you open and susceptible to attacks from the enemy because they have legal grounds because that's in your life because um, you're operating outside of covering that's what I'm trying to say so you really need to repent of um, your actions and your sins that you have um, been doing but also um, over broken covenants that you have spoken with your words so um, like soul ties, if you thought this person was your husband or your wife, um, promises um, to people um, in services and ministry and church, um, job blends, like, yeah, I'm gonna be at this job for the next year. Like, they, they be asking <laughs> stuff like that. And we just like break covenants, but when you break covenants, that makes you open um, to attack. And it also limits, um, the receiving of blessings because you have to make that right. And we see that in scripture that um, there was like a drought and then uh, I think it was like three years and then David was like, Lord, what happened? And basically Saul broke a covenant that he made with um, another, not lineage, um, another people. And God had to make amends. I mean, David had to make amends for that. And then the famine and drought stopped. So. If there seems to be a famine, a stronghold, <laughs> or a drought in your own personal life, look at how many covenants you have been breaking and um, just your sin life um, and your um, spiritual life that you get back in alignment and also repent of those things. And if you're able to make amends um, monetarily, you owe people money, um, really do that stuff before the year begin so you just have a clean sleep so yeah um basically think about everything that could be a stronghold in the spiritual realm but also um evident in the natural realm so everything that is basically um held off and you need it to be opened for you um in poverty is a stronghold sickness and illness uh depression mental illness um, low self-esteem, um, diabetes, cancer, um, generational curses, soul ties, um, absentee fathers, like everything that runs in your bloodline, in your lineage, and in basically your family, um, early childhood, pregnancy, um, Whatever is bad that um, shouldn't be part of your life, that is a stronghold. But what does the word say? The 
stronghold of Jericho, the walls came tumbling down and it says they went up. So um, when we go up, we go up in um, position, um, be able to um, seek God, going up to him in prayer. Um, it just anything that you ask in prayer, believe and you shall receive. So that's Matthew 21, 22. So that is what is available with um, divine appointment, alignment, instruction and strategy so they took the city took the treasures of the city so everything that you are believing for in god's will um delight yourself in the lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart so when we are delighting ourselves in him being in perfect alignment with him what we pray for we receive because it's already in his will and um those treasures that we want in our lives they are going to be given to us because these things have already been predestined to be given over to us in this year of alignment so um health and um financial provision and um peace um all the fruits of the spirit in galatians 5 joy love peace kindness goodness patience self-control faith and there's another one and i should know it <laughs> yeah Oh, meekness. Mm, be humble. <laughs> Sit down. I don't listen to that song, though. It's trash. Um, but um, basically, that those are the treasures that are stored up for us. And if your natural father knows how to good, give good gifts, how much more does your spiritual heavenly father know how to give good gifts? So this is what is waiting for us in perfect alignment and receiving from God. And then lastly, well, two last points. It says, after they took the treasures, that they um, set the city on fire. So um, the Bible says in 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, that God is a consuming fire. Um, his presence is a fire. So when we see that um, things that have been locked up, shut up, are available to us now. So we being the vessels and temple of God are able to carry his presence just like the Levites and the priests carried his presence to Jericho and set things ablaze. So we can set um, our generation ablaze on fire for the love of God, uh, our workplace, school, anywhere that we think that has been shut up, um, friends and family members that have not received Jesus Christ yet in this perfect alignment and um, divine strategy, just asking God, Lord, how do you want me to go about this person receiving you? He's gonna give an answer because they're already given over to him, to you in his hand, and then it's just gonna open up. So everything that seems to be shut up and locked up is gonna be opened to us in this um, year of alignment and divine intervention and all that other cool stuff. So that is very exciting that we can see a fresh fire and a fresh outpouring of his power power and provision and um his presence and then last part of the scripture it says that rahab actually inherited the benefit and blessings of her obedience but also the obedience of um the children of israel and like jerusalem and the jewish like christian people so what we see is that there should be a reciprocal benefit to others in your obedience. So that's what my pastor Cornelius always says that um, someone's waiting for your obedience and someone is feeling the consequences of your disobedience um, being out of alignment. So one of the main things um, I got from the Holy Spirit was there's a lot of out of position, out of alignment people, missing a lot of waiting people. So if I'm out of alignment, out of position, someone can't receive Christ because I am personally not um, in his will or in his covering the way that I should be. Um, you can literally just miss people because your paths don't cross when the Lord says go there or speak to this person or sit still and wait like i've had a lot of divine connections and interactions um 
from interruptions in my day. So um, interruptions are just invitations for divine interactions. So people are waiting for us um, if we just get in alignment as the body of Christ and as believers. So Rahab, her family, her line not, yeah, lineage, but also her father's household did not get destroyed with Jericho. So a lot of souls um, can be won when Christians are in alignment, not um, from their own actions, but God, like literally what I always say at the end of my videos, God uses people um, to bless people. So how have you been a blessing today? So really um, think about that in your alignment. Am I in alignment that others benefit from my obedience? So anything that you do, it should not be an isolated blessing of like all monetary value to you. You get a spouse, like that's not how alignment works. Um, it spreads outwardly and um, it includes, it's very inclusive. Um, God is inclusive, the Holy Spirit is inclusive. So um, really think if you are out of alignment because the benefits have only been singular and not corporately. All right, so to end off, I just wanna talk about individual alignment with the Lord and us being in our full calling, in our full um, operation and um, position and just alignment with the Lord. And I got this from Jackie Hill Perry, um, her new poem, Five Reasons Christians Need to Laugh More. And when I was just um, listening to the poem and I was just thinking about my own personal life, I think that it is not any coincidence that my name is Winston, which means Joy Stone. Um, I easily like make people laugh and um, people have joy around me, joy stone. But also that I don't get sick often, but one of my proficient spiritual gifts is healing. And God says that laughter works like good medicine and the joy of the Lord will be your strength. So me just operating in my assignment, my uh, position, and uh, just being full in my own personal calling. That is why I make people laugh. Um, people um, get healed when the Holy Spirit uses me to pray with them because I'm using the fullness of my personal alignment and position with the Lord. And um, I think that a lot of us are not in personal alignment with the Lord to know that not only do we operate differently than how the world does and unsaved people do, but many of us operate very differently from how other Christians broadly, but even in our personal circles operate. And I get this from um, the relationship between Jonathan and David in the scripture that um, many are called, but few are chosen. So where I get this from in Joshua, I mean, Jonathan and David is the fact that the things that David had to undergo and Jonathan was exempt from, though we would consider them both um, Jewish, what we would also consider um, Christian, um, being in the lineage of like Israel and um, Jerusalem, like God's chosen people. Why did Jonathan not have to go through the same things that David had to go through like 17 years in a cave in a promise as a child that he didn't see until he was a man talking about David. It's because when you are in um, full operation, you are operating differently than certain people and that's okay. And I think a lot of us have to be okay with that because um, one thing that I'm, I'm just gonna speak about like my own behalf, like I'm very bold, I'm very zealous about um, the gospel in Jesus, like all my Instagram, whatever you see on my social media, Jesus Center, all I watch is um, 
movies and television and sermons and um, music that is either Christian oriented or um, is God glorifying. So there's certain things that my spirit and my sanctification being consecrated and used by God will not allow. And um, just with the Lord, um, it's just like calling me um, to hire with uh, my fasting more, my waking up early and praying in Bible study because we have to operate differently than the world, but also differently than other Christians to be able to be used by God. Sanctification is being set apart for God's use. So that is my operation. That is my position. And if I am um, shrinking back, like down to people who are not as bold as me and it's not as um, zealous and fervent about the gospel, I'm out of alignment and out of position because I'm not having them rise up to um, where I I am, but I'm shrinking back to where they are. And um, God has grace for everyone and it says in Romans that God gives everyone by their measure of faith. So we have different measures of faith. So what I've seen in my own walk is that my boldness, zealousness, operating in my position in alignment with the Lord, it awakens boldness in other people to come up. So that's why I operate differently. And um, I just have a different call because when you are not a Jonathan, but you are a David and um, too much is given, much is required of you. We have to understand that the way we walk, the way we talk, um, even in Christian circles, <laughs> that we are awakening freedom in other people to um, be free in their full calling because we're operating in our own full calling. So I know um, just from the Bible, I think is just seen throughout scripture that most of the time, the most chosen and called people are the ones um, most rebelling <laughs> or uh, most denying that calling on their life. Like I have a friend, she is a prophet. I tell her this all the time. Her prophetic level is so high. It's like, no, your operating is in that position, in that, um, in that call. So if you want to call yourself a pastor, preacher, not a preacher, that's not, <laughs> that's not the fivefold ministry, um, evangelist, prophet, apostle, teacher, or pastor, I think I, I think I got all five, <laughs> um, or not, it does not matter because God has still called you and chosen you for that operation. So a lot of us are in um, self-denial or um, just like rebellion. I know um, a lot of us don't want to be like churchy or um, just basically churchy, but it is okay <laughs> to be known as that Christian um, person because what I've seen in my own life, even what just happened this week, that me being known as that Christian person um, because I was bold and outspoken um, created avenues for me to minister or operate more than when I was being secretive and just like sowing seeds. When I was like loud is in um, Acts 4, um, Peter and, uh, is it Paul? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Are on, I think it's, um, mm. I don't even know, but um, Peter's on trial and he is so bold about the gospel. It caused other people to believe in what he was saying and that he was with Jesus. And so a lot of us um, are meant to operate in that full gifting um, and just anointing of being zealous and bold for the gospel that others can come to Christ. So that's why I was saying, because, um, because I, I'm known as like the Christian guy, um, people, when they are in need, come to me for like prayer, Bible study, guidance. But um, them coming to me wasn't an option when I wasn't bold about the gospel and speaking up about sin and things that are wrong. 
um, and basically being tolerant of things I know that the Bible Bible does not tolerate. So a lot of us are out of personal alignment um, with our operation. So we aren't, um, well, let's just call it what it is. A lot of us are in um, personal sin and that even um, hinders are operating with other people receiving God. Like I even know like for myself, um, I need to do like a few house calls for um, people that are sick. And um, just with faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if I know that my fasting or my praying or my Bible study is not where it's supposed to be, my faith in my gifting, even though like healings always happen, uh, in God's timing is not my own power and strength. My faith is directly um, tied to my alignment. So if I believe that I'm in sin or I'm out of alignment, and like you can feel that, you can feel um, when the Holy Spirit is far or close to you. So um, this will hinder your faith, not hinder the operation of God, because God still moves because His grace is sufficient but he is uh, more faithful to his word in that other person's um, faith than actually you being in proper alignment. So I think a lot of us internally need to be in alignment when it comes to um, our operation and our standing with God that, hey, this is um, the occupation like the spiritual occupation that i hold and position that i hold um not not like um career wise or anything but um definitely internally about the lord has called me to more so that has to be okay <laughs> um has called you to more fasting prayer bible study greater sanctification that you cannot watch everything, listen to all music, be around all people, be in all spaces. And um, that's just a word of freedom for everybody. You cannot be everything to everybody all the time. Um, there's just certain things <laughs> that you operate in that people do not operate in. And because they don't operate in that office, they don't have the same operation as you and neither do they have the same consecration and sanctification. Uh, consecration is basically the cleansing of yourself for God's use. So sanctification being set apart for God's use, but consecration is the cleansing um, of God's use. So just um, know that, that you need to be in proper alignment. Um, even when you're the only one, it's, it's so weird that I could be in like a room full of um, non-believers and be real bold. But if I'm in a room full of believers and they're not as bold as me, it's like, dang, man, <laughs> why are y'all not up, up here? But the way they get up here is by um, you raising a banner. Uh, another scripture, it says, um, as we raise the banner god will draw the scattered so your freedom and boldness for the gospel awakens freedom and other people to gather your light and spirit and anointing attracts certain people because they are in that um same spirit same office same gifting most of the time or even um just discipleship and they are called to you so when we are out of personal alignment, there are people waiting on our obedience and um, faithfulness to God. And there are people missing out because of our rebellion and disobedience to God. So we just have to know that um, when we are out of personal alignment, a lot of doubt comes in, right? Um, you'd be like, man, the Lord's telling me to speak to this person in a grocery store. What's that mean? What's that the Lord? If you are in personal alignment and fellowship and communion with the Lord, you know his voice. Um, the voice of a stranger will not hear. Um, that's Jesus because um, he's the good shepherd and the Holy Spirit is a comforter and a teacher. Um, so we should know his voice with great, great clarity and um, great precision. So... It just provides opportunity for the enemy to come in when we are out of personal 
alignment, not like corporate alignment with others, but what the Lord requires of us and um, just knowing what comes out, um, certain things and boldness come out in um, prayer and fasting. And um, just know that there is so much greater that um, God is calling us to and in that we can't operate in that office being like everyone else, like the world, but even um, closer other Christians. So another part that I want to talk about is that some of us aren't actually out of alignment. We are out of season. And that's closely related um, to my last point, um, personal office and alignment um, with the Lord in operation. But being out of season means that you are actually in your office, um, in your gifting, operating well, but what you believe that you are um, called to, you are moving um, too quickly out of, or you have stayed too long somewhere. And um, just like little illustrations, but um, the scripture is first king 17 um about the prophet elijah so if i am out of season there are certain plants that only bloom in the springtime and there are certain uh plants like pumpkins that only bloom i mean um come with the harvest uh of fall and autumn so a lot of us um if we are planting out a season and expecting to reap out a season, we are also going to make ourselves discouraged. And um, the Bible says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So when we're call, talking about divine strategy, divine instruction, the Lord um, tells us for a season, um, there's a season to reap and to rest. Um, so if you think that, oh my gosh, why is this not working out right now? The fact is, is that it's not not working out. It's actually just a different season, um, probably in seed sowing versus harvest or blooming um, versus um, harvest or seed sowing. So an example of that would be, <laughs> um, not to make this like relationship centered, but um, life comes in the spring. <laughs> so um, babies, um, new flowers and stuff like that. So if I meet someone in um, the summertime, right? And I'm like, man, uh, why is our relationship not working out, but love blossoms in the springtime. Um, I'm trying to sow seeds of relationship in the summertime, winter, and fall when those should be um, seeds of friendship to create a foundation for courting and marriage um, and um, fiance, engagement, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> so um, a lot of us are getting our hope deferred, like, man, God, why isn't this uh, personal relationship working out? No, it's not that it's not working out. It's that um, you need to take the um, reasonable steps um, leading up to um, things. So a lot of us are um, reaping out of season, not even always romantically also, but also in um, friendships. We're trying to reap things um, very quickly before um, any foundation, like, I think that's why there's so many parables and analogy of um, gardening and sowing and reaping in the Bible because um, God stands outside of time and um, he works in season. So a lot of us, we're really out of season when it comes to um, relationships, schools, jobs, um, and even churches. I know a lot of people um, struggle with um, being at a dead church. It's like, oh, this is the only church I ever knew. But um, oftentimes the Lord is calling you um, to move. But I think 
I don't know which one is worse, moving too late or moving too soon, but um, I know a lot of us do uh, move too soon out of um, jobs, out of schools, out of churches, and out of relationships. So the Lord has placed you and planted you at this church, right? And um, you, you're just ready, like, Lord, I'm ready for full-time ministry. They're not letting me operate in my gifts. They're not letting me um, do my full potential and my calling. Like, I know the promise. But if we're just coming scripturally about how God operates in timing, God, he is able to do things quickly, but he prefers the process. <laughs> and we just see that um, with just like... I guess like two examples is David being promised to be king over Israel, Jerusalem, um, God's chosen people as a child, but spent 17 years in a um, cave at, uh, while being like chased by Saul, um, him defeating um, the bear and the lion, defeating Goliath, was a warrior and then became king. There were so many prelim steps before actually receiving the promise and a lot of us um we hear from god and we know his voice and it's like hey lord this is the promise but the inner the inner lying um in between section we just um skip over and so if you are out of season like moving too quickly um out of churches that um could properly disciple you properly cover you I love us um, just moving all willy nilly without any covering. Um, and then you're open to attack um, from the enemy and from the demonic and like witchcraft. Let, let your boy tell you <laughs> about that upper level um, spirituality that you begin operating in. And then um, full time ministry isn't as glamorous as we think. Or even in um, jobs, right? We move so quickly out of jobs that even if this job is not for you, we're out of alignment and out of position when it comes to the um, the position not, not being for you, not called to you, but the people being called to you. Like literally had a new job come from an old job that I was at because of the person that worked there. So. If I quit my job too early and me and him didn't have like this conversation of, hey, um, do you want to work over here that pays twice as much as I was getting at my old job, I would have been out of position and out of alignment because I'm not sensitive to God's voice because I am so sensitive to my feelings and emotions and not the word of God and not his voice and his leading that I move out of step with him. And that's um, very um, dangerous because the presence of God and his glory is what um, protects us. And that's where his provision is in his presence. Presence is his provision. So if you are finding um, things not being fruitful, um, it's probably because you are out of position and um, you should look at that um, first and foremost spiritually um, what type of fruit you are bearing at your school job, church, um, but also out of season with um, people, right? Because a person cannot occupy an already taken space. So um, every divine connection is determined by divine appointment and um, position. So if the Lord is like, hey, I need you to be in um, connection and relationship um, with this person, um, discipleship, friendship, ministry, um, marriage, whatever. If I am currently in a relationship, I can't get a wife that is called to me if I already have a girlfriend. <laughs> if um, I am already at a job it, it can hinder um, divine appointments. So um, most of the times, interruptions are invitations for the divine. So when you are truly acknowledging God in all your ways and he will direct your paths, like where you should go, there are people 
that are assigned, like in that same calling, like the Lord is the beginning, middle, the end. He sees the end from the beginning. So he knows like where this person is going to be, where you want to go and where you two will meet up together. So if I am acknowledging that on my past, like Lord, um, do you want me to go to this event? Do you want me to um, go to this church service? Do you want me to go to this revival? Do you want me to go to this um, job application? I think, I, I mean, <laughs> job <laughs> interview. I think often we miss out on the divine because um, we are so stuck in our routines that are actually out of alignment. And that's why we have to be very sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading and voice of knows, like truly having um, a sensitive heart and um, an open, like, and that's why the Bible says a lot of times, and I'm just noticing, the Bible says um, to those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Like the Lord wants you to be able to hear his voice. And to those who have eyes to see, let them see, like, let me see um, these divine connections and things that are on the inside that I'm called to because oftentimes people are already in preparation of God's presence, but we are not purposeful in how we are um, operating with them. Like uh, when the Lord tells you like to speak and pray with people, God has set up this interaction. They might have lost their job, they might have broken up um, with somebody. There are certain things you do not know and have not seen the beforehand preparation that they are open and receive the gospel of Jesus Christ at this time, at this hour. Um, but if you're just sensitive, like, hey, I don't need to know all the behind the scenes, but I know the leading of the Holy Spirit for me to go to this place, meet this person, pray, Bible study, tell them the gospel of Jesus Christ, and then they accept him. It's like, man, because... I was in the right position, right season, right alignment with the Lord that I can um, be still or move at his notice. And I think that's a um, just a real sign of spiritual maturity is um, sitting still. Um, honestly, a lot of us move out of season. And so if you quit that job, drop out of school, um, go to another school, go to another job, go to another church, everything divine in that position you are missing out on so simple illustration if i work nine to five and another person works 10 to 3 a.m and i am called to that person literally our paths do not match up because of what um just timing so there's a lot of things in divine appointment um divine connections um that are led in position, being still, being steadfast, being patient, or moving. And um, a lot of us um, just need to be very aware about um, like seasons, right? So even in um, comparison, there are certain uh, fruits and harvests that only come in the fall. And so, if we're looking at flowers or trees or something that bloom and blossom in the springtime, but I'm sowing into a business um, that's not supposed to reap until the fall and autumn, that will make you discouraged and um, make you out of alignment, make you out of position like, Lord, did you really call me to this? Yes, he did call you to this. It's just your measure of success is on the wrong scale so you need to know what scale is um applicable to you and how do we know what scale is applicable to you it's by the word of god by his voice and about being in proper alignment so being in proper position proper alignment proper um, assignment and proper season so a lot of us um, really need to pray about divine instruction and divine strategy when it comes to seasons. Some of us have books, um, businesses, albums, whatever, that are just out of season. Lord might want you to write this right now and not even publish it for three years. It's whatever 
God wants. And if that is how he operates, I think we just operate too early. Um, we just need the mentorship. We need the provision. We need the funds. We need the investors. Like there are steps to this. So if you oh, um, want the divine manna, you need to stop um, chasing the mammon and the money. So oftentimes like I can't have a divine connection with someone um, at an event if I'm scheduled to go to work. So a lot of us, um, I know I'm going back and forth. That's why um, I do every side. Like some of us are out of position because we are um, not steadfast where we need to be and we keep moving and we need to be still. Other half of us, we actually need to move or out of position because we're out of alignment um, where we are presently. So I do both. Like, I don't want to let uh, people be like, oh, that was confirmation. I quit my job. And now you have no way to take care of your family. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you need to be in communion, fellowship with the Holy Spirit and get strategy. Um, I know the Bible verse is about judgment. And, um, but, um, the verse about write the vision, make it plain is um, very important that you get instruction of like, hey, Lord, how should I move for 2018? Um, maybe um, this thing served its season um, in service and um, volunteering and friendship. So I need to move to the next season of my life. And um, seasons and um, divine numbers, um, it's usually 40. So that can be days or years or something. But um, we just have to know that oftentimes, I do believe a lot of us operate way too quickly before even like the, the roots are in the ground. Like uh, planting, you gotta till the soil. You have to uh, fertilize it. Like you have to break up ground plant the seeds, water it, let the sun operate. There is so much. And then we're just like, man, nothing fruitful, nothing fruitful. It's not, that is not fruitful. The roots have to go down first. The stem has to come up. It has to have leaves and branches and come up. And then even when it does have all that, it has to be able to sustain itself, right? And then once it sustains itself, it grows out and then fruit comes. Cause how you gonna bear fruit if your roots will just cause you to fall and the foundation is not there or um, the body uh, part of it isn't um, tall enough and then predator, predators come and like eat it early. So there's so much that you have to, that's a word from the Lord. All right, <laughs> um, we're gonna break down um, the different parts of the plants, right? So um, roots are foundational. So there has to be a good foundation. Jesus Christ is our foundation in our word. And also um, it, the foundation branches out. So um, that is a, um, a connection um, system, right? So um, as your foundation, um, some of us um, need to know that we don't operate individually, but we operate in conjunction with others. Um, so that's with a palm tree, how they're able to um, bend during great hurricanes is because the roots are intertwined with one another. So we also have to have good roots that are deep. So the Lord is operating in a lot of us in character more than circumstance. So the Lord is developing good things in your own personal character that's deep, that goes down, and then it goes out in connection to other people, all right? So um, plants have a stem, that's a body um, upwards. That's your um, upwards relationship um, with God in the Holy Spirit, right? And um, the stem, um, it's the, it's the phylum and the phloem. It flows up and down. So in our own personal Bible study, prayer life, um, the flow is the water. Jesus is the living water. The Holy Spirit is the living water. Um, God fills us up um, with his presence until we overflow um, um, with his anointing and with his calling. So a lot of us, um, we don't have that um, continuous flow um, um, up and down. It's supposed to be reciprocal. 
um, prayers go up, blessings come down, but no, actually <laughs> um, discipline and Christ likeness comes down and uh, familiarity with his voice. So that is what the Lord is developing um, in our stem, in our body, like the girth of us, that we are able to be st um, strong and um, that's our trunk, like the bark, the baby, that we are be, um, be able to withstand um, anything that comes against us because we're good in foundation, but we're also good in body and in heart, uh, that we have um, connection with the Father. And then um, you have the branches, the branches branch out. So um, what we have, most likely, uh, I'm picturing like a tree right now. Um, what you have is that uh, different animals and organisms um, benefit from the leaves and the branches of the tree. And what that is, is that um, these are our connections from non-believers. So um, our roots, our connections to other people, um, these people are um, believers and other Christians because um, on top of the roots is the um, soil, which is the good foundation, is that good ground, which is the word of God. Um, but when you have relationships that are service level, underneath is Christ Jesus holding us together. So that is what um, differentiates um, the roots from the branches because the branches and the leaves are all out in the open. So um, that's for everybody um, to receive. Um, and so um, other organisms, even non-believers can benefit from our Christ likeness, being in proper alignment, um, proper position, and um, proper office and operation. Um, and so from the, um, the branches um, come the leaves. The leaves, uh, through photosynthesis, um, absorb um, the rays from the sun to produce um, sugar and to produce um, how we um, how we grow um, when it comes to the um, imagery of the tree, and um, it just is the energy source. So. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, the Son of God, but also the Son, is our source of strength. So he should be our strength in how to interact with other organisms, non-believers, the unsaved people, um, and is what has it to be fruitful. Because um, from the branches, the branches branch out amazingly. So you can have one branch, but it has two cutoffs, right? And then this one cutoff has two cutoffs and so on and so forth. So your one interaction with one non-believer um, should be fruitful to generations and generations to come and should branch off because um, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So we are able to um, share our testimony or um, do something to create a testimony in other people that they go and tell and um, this creates a um, system and connection of faith. Um, yo, I spoke to this Christian. I had no <laughs> belief in God. He prayed with me. I got healed. It's a testimony. Um, I talked to this Christian. She um, gave me a prophetic word and it happened, I was depressed, prayed with this Christian, and then boom. So they can't deny um, the power of God, all right? So leaves, photosynthesis, and then fruit. Um, fruit, um, typically still in the format of a tree, um, produces um, off the branches, but uh, kind of like downward, and then it falls um, if it's not reaped up, right? <laughs> But um, inside of the fruit often is seeds, are seeds. So um, being fruitful, um, you should be seeing um, seeds kind of in the body. I don't know. <laughs> um, prophetic words are a little, <laughs> a little hard. Um, but there's something about that, um, not 
that um, we fall downward, but um, the fruit, when it's like too heavy, um, it should pluck off and fall to the ground and then it should bear up another tree um, to be able to um, follow the system. So us as believers should be making other disciples um, when we're in alignment and um, other Christians that will make other Christians and then the cycle continues out. Yo, <laughs> I tell you, I was not, like I was expecting like to give a prophetic word that I've been getting, but a fresh prophetic word on camera, boy. Now I can look and see like how I look like when I'm hearing from God. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but um, that was cool. So I was talking about seasons. Um, so really go into prayer about seasons um, when it comes to um, your relationships. So basically what you need uh, for 2018 is to pray to God about um, all your relationships, all your involvements, um, school, ministry, church, and jobs, and um, just take inventory of um, these things and just go one by one. Lord, what do you think about Winston? Oh, you want him to go? Boom, all right. Lord, what do you think about Winston Jr.? Oh, you want him to stay? Um, what was his purpose? Oh, um, I need to disciple him? Cool. Um, what do you think about Winston Nista? Um, you want her to stay? Cool. What is she for? She's going to increase my faith in evangelism? Cool. Boom. And just operate. Um, just take an inventory of all your time. Um, I go to first... Baptist Winston, I don't know, <laughs> that, that's the name of the church. Lord, is my season up there? No, stay. Um, you want me to do any ministries? No, you just want me to rest and glean and get discipled? Cool. Um, Lord, I work at First Winston National Bank. Do you want me to be there? No. Um, where do you want me to be? Uh, I'll hit up this person um, that gave me blah, blah, blah. It's just like, yo, take legitimate inventory and um, just ask God to reveal himself in all these situations and um, places and people um, if they are like him or not like him. So, yeah. Boy, I got a prophetic word on camera. This year got me lit. <laughs> so, um, last thing that I want to say about seasons is that a blessing out of season is a distraction. All right. So, um, I don't, dang, I don't really want to, well, I'll do um, two examples then. I'll do um, job and um, relationships, right? So, how can a good thing out of season be a bad thing? Um, if I get a promotion, right? Promotion at work, more responsibility, more money. Um, and just more work. I might be working uh, to the point that I can't go to church. So if it's a lot of work, I won't be reading as much in my Bible, praying as much. So getting a new position is a good thing, but if it's out of season where I'm not able to manage my time um, properly, it's a good thing out of um, season, which is a bad thing and a distraction. So everything good is not always God, and everything presented is not always purpose. So you really need to ask God, like, hey, Lord, is this the season for me to accept this new job? Is this the season that you want me to go into ministry? Is this the season um, that you want me to plan and move and all this um, other stuff? So we need to be in proper season and just um, take inventory of those things because yes, the Lord may be calling you to full-time ministry in 10 years, right? So <laughs> you really need to uh, no, because you're going to be overburdened. That, that's why I get a lot. That I am overburdened with things that I do out of season. All the times, maybe even out of position, because I'm not even graced in that area that I have a covering to operate in that office. And um, basically, I get tired because um, 
he has not graced me in that area and I quit. And um, I last for a long time. And I think it's a lot of us, we last a lot of time out of the position. <laughs> and just because you're able to do something doesn't mean that you're called to do something. Um, so if a space or operation um, can be occupied by you, doesn't mean that you're, it's supposed to be occupied by you. So um, that's just the Bible verse. Um, everything is permissible in Christ Jesus. So we're allowed to do these things, but not everything is profitable. So I can get a corporate job anytime like I feel like it. Eh, mm, I don't really know because um, God be closing doors. Um, know that <laughs> if things are not panning out, it may not be the enemy. God be closing doors um, because he takes the wisdom of man and makes it foolishness. So a lot of us, um, we think like, hey, if I could just connect with this person, if I just network here, if I just get a um, job here, then everything will be blessed. The Lord will stop you from ever getting um, where you think you need to be, or he might give it to you. And then you get where you think you need to be, and then you see that's not where you're called to be. <laughs> and so, um, we just have to know that a good thing out of the season is a distraction. So if we go with relationships, if I am um, with a girl, we get married or whatever, but um, I don't have the um, stability of like a house, a job, a car to be able to take care of a family, um, a blessing of a marriage or a child, because children are blessings, um, become a burden out of season. So a good thing out of season is a distraction and can oftentimes become a burden. So a lot of us um, really do have good things that we just need to put in proper season, proper position in alignment with the Lord. So um, last Bible section, which is really cool, um, just in the same regard of alignment, divine strategy, and divine um, instruction in like where we should go it being purposeful and intentional with everything that we do so it comes from first king 17 and it's about the prophet elijah with a j and elijah the tishbite who was of the inhabitants of gilead said unto ahab as the lord god of israel liveth before whom i stand there shall not be dew nor rain these years but according to my word, this is a powerful man of God. <laughs> and the word of the Lord came unto him saying, get thee hence and turn thee eastward <laughs> and hide thyself by the brook um, Shereth that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. And he went and dwelt by the brook Jareth that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up before there because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came and to him saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwelleth there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Really cool. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering the sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. So we're just going to stop there. We're going to continue on. But I just want to um, point out some key points. So when you're in perfect alignment with the Lord, um, his presence has provision. So what we see is that there's a drought in the land. The Lord um, gives Elijah divine instructions and divine um, strategy of go to this brook where I'm going to send ravens 
to provide for you. So if you're in perfect alignment and are receiving from his strategy, there should be provision there. I'm not saying that um, there will be no difficulty because that's a difference, but there should be provision in his presence because he is a provider, he's a father, and um, the giver of good gifts being Jehovah Jireh. So if you see a lot of lack, not struggle, uh, or difficulty because that's pruning from God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus. But I'm actually saying like lack and like drought, like we see here. Um, that be might be because of the presence of God not being there. But the next part says that the brook dried up. So you can actually be in perfect alignment, but the season of sustainability has ended. So this is what we see there that for that season that he was there, the ravens were giving him food, um, the brook was giving him drink, but then it ended. So uh, we have to be sensitive to that shift. So um, the Lord called him to go to a, wi a widow woman um, to sustain him um, and not the brook and the ravens any longer. So a lot of us, we have to be sensitive to those seasons and times that the things that sustained us once will not continue to sustain us because these things are transitional. Uh, transitional jobs, schools, churches, and people. Um, that's another thing that oftentimes God uses people to bless people. So there is provision in people. So don't deny blessings um, when they are presented to you. I know a lot of times we're just a little prideful and we don't receive help, but someone receives a blessing from the Lord by being a blessing to you and that's in the word. So if you're denying this by being too prideful, um, then you are not only rejecting your provision from God, but you're also hindering someone else's blessing um, in giving and they're receiving. I'm um, giving to you, but receiving from God. All right. So, um, as the woman, all right. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, fear not, go and do as thou hast. Um, said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after me, after make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meat shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she, and he, and her, and she and he and her house did eat many days provision, all right? And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fill according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the wom woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick and his sickness was sore, that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O man of God? Art thou come to me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid upon him his own bed. He cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow? with whom I sojourned by slaying her son. And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's son, I mean soul, come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came into him again and revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out unto the chamber and to the house and delivered him unto his mother and Elijah said see thy son live and the woman said to Elijah now by this I know thou art a man of God and that the word 
of the Lord in thy mouth is true. So, like I said um, beforehand, your alignment should bless others and not just only yourself. So what we see is that um, Elijah was in a place that when the widow's son fell ill, he was able to heal and um, bring him back from the dead uh, by the power and presence of God working through him. So likewise, when we are in perfect alignment, in power, there should be manifestations um, that bless others, even non-believers or um, even people within the body of Christ. So really be um, cognizant of if your blessing is in overflow and um, bountiful to bless others. Um, if it's only in a measure that it can't sustain others, um, really see what is your source. Where is this blessing coming from? Is it truly from God? And now the best part. I'm just going to pray um, in receiving and um, just um, be led by the Holy Spirit. And that's how we're just going to end the video. Um, dear Lord, we just want to thank you for this time that we just come in your name. Glorious Father. You are Abba. You are Father. You are magnificent. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for a complete heart change for all those who hear me under the sound of my voice, God, that they get in perfect alignment, in a perfect assignment for you, that they individually get into their office in which you have called them, and those who have been chosen um, take up the greater mantle that you have in their lives, oh God. Lord, uh, we repent corporately, Lord, for every um, word curse spoken over us, or we have spoken every um, deal and covenant and obligation and promise we have made without you, Lord, every soul tie, every generational curse that's in our bloodline and lineage and sin and iniquity and transgression and every um, stronghold in principality in heavenly places. We break it down. We repent, God, by the blood of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit of all these things that we have a clean slate and we claim this for others, God. We repent for other sins, iniquities, transgressions, soul ties, generational curses, and strongholds, oh God, that they also go into 2018 with a clean slate. Lord, we um, proclaim and prophesy ears to hear and eyes to see and um, proclaim and prophesy divine instruction, divine strategy, and just divine appointment position and connections, um, Lord, that we are in perfect unity with your spirit, God, that we can hear your Holy Spirit voice, we can hear your teaching and your leading, and we are sensitive to you, oh God. Clean us out, purge us, Lord, and consecrate us from the inside out, from our heart, mind, soul, body, and spirit, God, with your spirit, with your blood of Jesus, and with your anointing, God, that in the crushing, God, your anointing will go and move from faith to faith and to glory to glory in the marvelous, matchless name of Jesus Christ, God. We proclaim power, God, right now that everything in the demonic is loose and broken in the name of Jesus Christ, right? Who the Son says free is free indeed and that you will enter into us, that you will free us, God, from every stronghold, everything that is locked up, that is loose, God, has is loosed on earth, it shall be loosed in heaven, oh God. I Thank you, Jesus. I thank you in advance that our praise, um, Lord, will lock up every that will unlock everything that is locked uh, for us, and your treasures will be open, God, in health, in the anointing, in blessing, in relationships, in discipleship. Anything that we need, oh Lord, not in want, God, but need in the spirit that we are sustained by you, sustained by your love and your grace and your mercy and forgiveness and the sins that so easily beset us, they will no longer reign over our mortal bodies or spirits or mind, oh God, but with every 
temptation, you have created a way of escape. So Lord, we thank you for moving us from glory to glory and faith to faith that we are fruitful, oh God. Thank you for the pruning and the purging to make us fruitful and overflow, oh Lord. And we have thank you in perfect alignment to be still where we need to be still, that we are taking inventory of every person, every place, every church, every schooling, God, every relationship, every friendship, God, that um, we are in perfect alignment, that we can can um, remove and be purged and have sacrifices of those who are not called to us, God, and things that are not our portion and things that are not our assignment, that we do not grow tired and weary any longer, that you have not graced us in this area, but we are in perfect alignment that you have the grace, you have the measure, you have the faith um, where we should be sustained. And we thank you, God, that the people that we are assigned to, they are um, in divine um, uh, position and divine appointment, oh God. Send people that we should disciple. Send those that should disciple us. Send those, God, that are investors, God, in our soul, mind, spirit, in business, and our dreams, God. Um, that souls are one for the glory of God. We give you glory, God. We give you honor. We give you praise. Um, Holy Spirit, baptize us with your love, grace, mercy, and power and presence that we take you everywhere we go into 2018. It's in the name of Jesus that we thank you in advance with hearts of thanksgiving, receiving, and hope, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I am fire. Light it up. I proclaim health and healing in the name of Jesus. I want that in there. Open. Epitha. Watch. So I just want to thank you for watching the Blessing Report with Winston Mayo, the regular Christian guy. I really believe in this word, but um, I also believe in um, spiritual jurisdiction and what the Bible says about testing every spirit. So um, don't just take me at my word. Um, seek God in his word, like actual like Bible scriptures, um, test out um, the Holy Spirit revelation in me that is for you. Because when I say spiritual jurisdiction, um, there are principalities and rulers and geographical and heavenly areas. So make sure that uh, my word is for you by testing it. But um, I'm not even saying anything. Um, really groundbreaking. All I'm saying is um, see God, be obedient to him, and then see the blessings come afterwards, which is nothing new to us. And um, lastly, what I really want to get across is this video is coming out like a week before the new year. We have a great opportunity to get in perfect alignment and set off the new year um, correctly. Um, so really have intentional and purposeful repentance for all your um, sins, all um, your agreements and covenants that have been broken, all your generational curses, your soul ties, your strongholds, um, anything that could be locking you up. Um, from 2017 or earlier that you can go into 2018 with a clean slate basically and i just really want to um shout out my brother uh angel in his clothing brand apparel stock apparel um, with this romans 116 unashamed shirt that i have on Makes me look Puerto Rican, ah. but um, he's our sponsor for today. So go in the description box below and um, support good Christian clothing. And yo, be a blessing um, to someone else. This video can be your witnessing, your ministry, and your evangelism. So hit the like, subscribe button, and also share it um, to someone who just needs like a word of confirmation or direction for going into the new year. And um, I think that's all I got besides doo -doo -doo -doo. support me. If this has been a blessing, um, be a blessing to me. And you can also get something in return. I have a new book, Searching for Land. It is in the description box below. So go cop that thing. Go pop that thing. Hey. And um, 
Actually, someone actually bought my book the other day. I was ready. Like, yo, y'all actually yeah, do it. So I appreciate y'all. Um, is that everything? Um, check me out on all my social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, not Reddit, but Tumblr. Boom. Ha, I got it. And um, I'm really excited about what this new year holds and even doing this video, which is my first prophetic word video. I get a pro prophetic words individually all the time and pray with people but a corporate prophet word prophetic word is very cool so be on the lookout of what's coming next it should be really cool and exciting and yo i actually think that is it i think i covered everything <laughs> all the bible scriptures are in the description box below and um just remember to get in perfect alignment for 2018 and remember that God blesses people by using people to bless people. So how have you been a blessing today? Thanks for watching.